Holy Batman balls, this week's Monkey Island was a bumper set of goodies with so much to unpack. Mario makes an animated return to the screen and we get our first proper look at a location on Monkey Island. Guybrush returns as the central character of the scene and we even get to see a sneak peek into his backpack and he's putting that infinity pocket to good use. We're less than three weeks away from getting our hands on the game and playing through Return to Monkey Island for the first time. There's some PAX news to talk about at the end of the video, but first we should watch the minute long clip revealed this week by Dave Grosman. How was your trip to Monkey Island? Damp. People kept dropping me into cauldrons of glop for some reason. But I'll have my revenge on all of them! Welcome to Consequences, the only choice that matters. This channel is dedicated to story-driven adventure games like Monkey Island, The Last of Us, and so much more. Be sure to watch out for my video later this week, The Monkey Island 2, Le Chuck's Revenge, Iceberg Explained, which will be packed full of facts, trivia, and details about that game. But more important than that, I'm giving you an opportunity to win a Steam copy of Return to Monkey Island with the Horse Armor pre-order bonus. Details of the competition will be revealed in that video. So what happened in this week's Monkey Island Monday. Guybrush returns to Monkey Island for the first time since the year 2000 when he did so in Escape from Monkey Island and things are starting to look a lot different. The design has reverted back to the original design we saw in The Secret of Monkey Island rather than the Escape from Monkey Island version of the game which changed a few things. But there's still a lot to go through. The scene starts with Guybrush walking the trail to the monkey head and the first thing I notice is that Monkey Island is now set at night. This has never happened before. Typically Melee Island is set at night when you start the game but by the time you get to Monkey Island and towards the end of the game, it always appears during the day. I doubt there's much significance here, but it's definitely an interesting detail to the design. He walks past the private property sign and then things start to look a bit different on the trail. In the original game, there are plenty of dead bodies hung up on spikes. No longer are Shish Kebab and Shish Kajo on display, but you can see the remnants of one of them on the floor. Now, I'm a big believer in the majority of this game being set after the events of Tales of Monkey Island until I'm proven otherwise. I think the change in the trail's design to the giant monkey head could be proof that some time has passed and that this game will not be set entirely between Monkey Island 2 and Monkey Island 3. Also, the totem pole where Jojo Senior holds the lever is completely removed. Could someone have removed it following the untimely death of our dear, beloved monkey companion? Maybe it's just wishful thinking on my part, and this is just down to the artistic choices of Rex, Ron, and the team. Moving swiftly along, the giant monkey head appears in all its glory back in its rightful place. We get a brief look at the statue in the gameplay trailer a few months ago when it was shown with Elaine, and this scene is actually slightly Slightly different. The monkey head is firmly closed, whereas in the earlier scene it was open and there is no key or Q tip to be seen. Perhaps suggesting that we will be revisiting this puzzle and we will need to find a new way to barter the key from our dear old friend Herman Tufra. Further down the path, we are reintroduced to Murray for the first time since Tales of Monkey Island. Another solid indication that this scene takes place after that game. He's hanging out with some friends on spikes to the right of the giant monkey head. After a brief conversation, we learn that Murray has somehow found his own way to Monkey Island in that typical Murray fashion where he just disappears and somehow manages to end up in places he should never be able to get to. But that's our dear old Murray. And we love him for it. There's a great callback to the secret of Monkey Island when Murray says people kept dropping him into cauldrons of glop. If you recall, one of the ingredients to get to Monkey Island is a human skull, and Murray certainly fits that bill. The actual item it 
the ingredient that it asked for is a pressed human skull. So hopefully no one was stamping on Murray to get him pressed down like we had with the flag. His reasoning for being on Monkey Island is not revealed, but I would bet it has something to do with taking over the world, or perhaps he's trying to find the secret of Monkey Island for himself or attempting to return to hell. After Guybrush adds the bone arm to his inventory, we're given a glimpse at what he's carrying. And it is, um, it's quite a lot. The first thing I noticed was that he was carrying a skull that looks suspiciously like the skull next to Murray, which makes me think that we're going to need to arrange these skulls in a specific order, perhaps as an alternative way to open up the monkey head. Now let's take a look at what he actually had in his inventory. The first item makes me think it's a task list. So I imagine this could be our running tally of tasks that Guybrush needs to complete during his adventure. Next to that looks like it could be the Mighty Pirate's journal, which would be filled with lore, explanations, updates, and more. The next one along makes me think of a voodoo book. Perhaps there will be some need for Guybrush to cast some spells during his adventure. Then we have a key, but I couldn't possibly speculate what this key actually unlocks, or even if it's used on Monkey Island. One of the more interesting things in his inventory is the two lenses, or monocles perhaps. I think I know exactly where and whom this item comes from. Wally's map shop has two lenses on his desk, which I believe were his backup in case someone stole his monocle again, and it looks like the mighty thief targets Wally once more. A couple harder to read items next, a bag of coins and a knife, a pirate of Guybrush's renown. It's of no surprise he's packing stacks and packing heat. It definitely looks more like a knife than a sword. So whether insult sword fighting returns is still up in the air, unless it's insult knife fighting but I don't like that as much. The last item on the second row is a stack of crackers. It could be for sustenance or it could be for a parrot-like puzzle like we had in Monkey Island 2, who knows? Then we have some sort of maps or literature. One of them looks to me like some sort of pamphlet for a Scientology or faux religion thing. Could it be the Church of LeChuck making a grand return? Perhaps the most exciting item is the tentacle in the dish. How Guybrush is even carrying that around is anyone's business. What's interesting about this is that it closely resembles the design of a one certain purple tentacle from Maniac Mansion and Day of the Tentacle. This is a nice little easter egg which makes sense since Ron Gilbert created the original Maniac Mansion and Dave Grossman and took over with Tim Schafer for Day of the Tentacle. This is probably nothing more than a visual nod to an older project but I wouldn't be surprised if Ron's next game was a Maniac mansion remake. I know it's something that he wants to do. Next in Guybrush's inventory is another book which again looks like it's voodoo in design. The third book is a picture of LeChuck on the front so could this be a journal belonging to GP LeChuck himself? Also do you think we'll find out the ghost pirate's real name in this game? TBD. The last thing to talk about is the musical sheet which I would wager is the solution to the skull heads puzzle. Poor Murray will need to see a doctor once Guybrush is through with him. What's interesting is that Guybrush doesn't have the horse armour in his inventory, meaning that he never pre-ordered his own game. How disappointing. Speaking of the horse armour, Ron Gilbert has confirmed that while the item will be utterly useless and irrelevant to the plot of the game, Guybrush can show it to people, so hopefully there will be a lot of funny dialogue to uncover. And that's our reveal of the inventory system. A first look at Murray in action, and our first look at Guybrush back on Monkey Island, where he did promise to return. I'd love to hear your thoughts. My excitement for this game grows and grows, and with less than three weeks to go, I can barely contain myself. For those heading to PAX West this weekend, Monkey Island will be there in full force. You'll be able to walk the Melee Island High Street and may even be able to rub shoulders with some of the creators behind the game, including Ron Gilbert, Dave Grossman, David Fox, and Guybrush voice actor Dominic Armato. If you get to meet any of them, please say hello from Consequences, but like, don't make it sound like a threat.